this very steep and winding road starts in the town of Port St. John's and winds its way up the lush mountainside, eventually curling back on itself to terminate at the old runway on top of the mountain. The road is tarred or concreted all the way, so traction is good, even in wet weather, making this drive quite possible in any vehicle. The 9.8 km long road has 69 bends, corners and curves to contend with and some fairly steep gradients at 1 in 5. The views from the end of the airstrip are superb and include a bird's eye view over the Umzumvuba River, the gates of St. John as well as the river mouth itself. The road was well built many years ago, making extensive use of concrete to ensure it wouldn't suffer water damage from the heavy rains that fall in this area. The road is steep right from the start and begins winding its way through the outskirts of Port St. John's, heading generally into the west. There are lots of trees on the route and on a sunny day you'll need to constantly adjust your vision to see into the parts covered by shade. There are lots of pedestrians around who tend to walk on the roadway as the pavements are either non-existent or overgrown. Be particularly careful. Port St. John's is named after a Portuguese ship which was actually wrecked at Port Edward and later seafarers mistakenly identified the mouth of the Umzumvuba River as the site of this wreck. In the mid-1800s, the local Mpondo chief in Damasi allowed a few white traders to settle at the mouth of the river. When chief in Damasi died in 1876, the Mpondo Great House in Lusikisiki tried to take over the area. On the 17th of July 1878, Chief Ndamasi's oldest son, Nkweliso, reacted by ceding the western bank of the Umzumvuba River to the Cape Colony in return for being recognized as an independent ruler, and he and his people were promised protection. The river mouth was used as a port. However, this activity was abandoned in the 1940s due to siltation, which caused the river to become too shallow for vessels. The town was the principal port of the defunct Republic of Transkei, which lasted from 1976 to 1994. Port St. John's is known as the center of tourism on the wild coast. It's known for deep sea fishing as well as shore angling. The town has three beaches, of which the most popular and safest one is Second Beach. The Ponderland National Park is a forested area of 500 square kilometers in size, including the Umzumvuba River mouth and stretching north along the coast up to the provincial border with KZN. Tourists arrive from all over the world during July of each year to experience the world-famous sardine run. Approximately a thousand years ago, Bantu-speaking people began to settle along the east coast of southern Africa. The area was home to nomadic San and Khoi people who eventually became integrated into the Khoza tribes and brought with them the three characteristic cliques that are found in the language today. In the late 1700s, the khoza speaking tribes were beginning to feel the squeeze on their territories. Refugees were fleeing Shaka Zulu and his Zulu impis in the north and there were sporadic wars with the Boers in the east and the British in the south. The Great Cattle Killing of 1856 and the resulting famine devastated the Khoza and the resistance to the colonial forces fell. On the advice of the prophetess Nongkwa Wuze, people consumed or destroyed all of their cattle and crops. She foretold that all who did not, together with all the whites, were to be swept into the sea by a strong wind on the 18th of February 1857. After the 19th Frontier War, the area was incorporated into the Cape Provincial Administration. It was never really populated by European settlers because of its warlike reputation and was left largely to the indigenous people. The region was given nominal autonomy in 1963 under the separate development policies of apartheid South Africa. Self-government and full independence followed in 1976 and the area became known as the Transkei, meaning the land beyond the Kai River. The newly formed Transkei state was not recognized internationally and it remained a diplomatically isolated, politically unstable, one-party state until after South Africa's first free and fair elections in 1994 when it became part of the Eastern Cape Province. At the 2.8 km mark, a false summit is reached at 240 meters above sea level. 
From this point the road follows a valley and descends gently under the dense tree cover until the 5.1 km point where the road changes name from Airport Road to Kaguba Road. Make sure you turn right here. Be sure to watch part 2 of the Potsenjohns Airport Road.